This video contains or may contain spoilers for Hollow Knight. The Kingdom of Hallownest has multiple different areas and sections, but many of those areas also have sub-areas. Sometimes I feel like these spots can be forgotten when looking at the bigger picture of a location. In this video, I'll be giving some attention to some of my favorite Hollow Knight sub-areas by ranking my top 10. Number 10, Mantis Village in Fungal Wastes. This place is definitely a contrast from the rest of the larger area. All the structures and levers and everything look really cool, and it's interesting to think how this society developed completely independently of Hallownest. I might like it a little more if there wasn't so much hostile architecture, though. Number 9, Hallownest's Crown in Crystal Peak. This mysterious mountaintop has some unique features, notably the glowing stone slabs and the Statue of the Radiance with the pale ore at its base. It just feels cool to be at the highest point of Hallownest. The stone slabs are an enigma, but the Radiance statue provides some lore on how her memory was kept alive. Number 8, Blue Lake in Resting Grounds. It's a special kind of peaceful here. The lake answers the question of where all the water in the City of Tears comes from, and it's where the knight gets to have one last moment with Quirrell before the two part ways. The Wanderer's Journal talks about how the water is blue from the minerals in the cave that the lake is in, which is pretty neat. Number 7, Lake of Un in Green Path. A different lake this time, intriguing for its own reasons. The stone-looking structures in the background along the shore are cool-looking, and the interior of the lake has a lot of twisting, curvy vines growing everywhere. And of course, this is the spot where the knight meets the giant psychic slug herself. Number 6, Soul Sanctum in City of Tears. First off, the music in here sounds awesome. I like how the Sanctum's atmosphere just makes it feel haunted right as you walk in. The architecture and wall patterns are different from the rest of the city and give the place its own charm. I might rank this place higher if it weren't for all the annoying enemies everywhere. Number 5, Isma's Grove in Royal Waterways. I absolutely love the plants here, the ivy with the rounded leaves growing all over the walls. I can understand why Ogrim was so committed to protecting this place. Finding Isma's corpse is sad, but at least she died surrounded by her plants, and she leaves behind a little gift for the knight in her acid immunity granting tear. Number 4, Queen Station between Fog Canyon and Fungal Wastes. Several unique features set this place apart. It's a connection between two very contrasting areas. It's been abandoned long enough to have plant and fungal life growing wild within it. The architecture is super ornate and pretty, and you can just barely hear ringing bells and voices as the echo of a bygone era for the station. Number 3, Shrine of Believers in Resting Grounds. Team Cherry adding this place was such a clever idea. It's a nice little hidden secret, with a treasure in the form of a pretty building with a variety of fan messages inside. There are some small details that I really admire, like how the lights inside the building have the Dreamcatcher Essence pattern on them. Number 2, Joni's Repose in Howling Cliffs. There are many lifeblood cocoons scattered across Hallownest, and there's an entire lifeblood room in the abyss, but there's nowhere else to experience the beauty of lifeblood like you do in here. The endless stream of blue butterflies floating up in the center of the room is just so satisfying to watch. Before I get to number one, a few honorable mentions are the Weaver's Den, Pleasure House, Stag Nest, and Watcher's Spire. 
Number one, Spirit's Glade in Resting Grounds. Interestingly, this is where you access the Shrine of Believers from, making the Shrine a sort of sub-area within a sub-area. Sub-sub-area? Anyway, the Spirit's Glade has its own merit. The flowing water creates a peaceful, calming atmosphere, and the Glade is full of some really interesting and widely varying fan-designed characters. Absolutely worth the 200 essence to get in here. So what do you think of my list? What are your favorite sub-areas in Hollow Knight? Let me know in the comments! Thank you for watching this video. Please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.